the next item on my agenda is cleaning up the imbricata arc over here and that means removing all of the pops that we see here I'm going to do the same for the imbricatas on this side because I think I would need to decongest this area otherwise I'll get a repeat of what happened here The thing I have to be mindful of though is that some of the imbricatas I have here are lighter in color. They have less chlorophyll than the others and this makes them even more striking in appearance during winter. And I would like to have more of these types. So this ones you see at the left, these are all the dark types. And the ones at the right are the lighter types. The problem is, for some of these, I can't tell which type they are because I haven't taken notice of them. So I guess I'll just have to group the known ones and place them in a separate pile from the unknown ones. managed to harvest another decent pile from the imbricatas at the back. They'll be joining an already overflowing pack of imbricatas. After pulling out some of them, they no longer look as crowded, so I guess I'll be leaving them here a bit longer. You'll notice that I haven't removed all of the pups. I left some in. The ones that are remaining are still the ones that are remaining are still too small and they are too thin I want them to be at least one-fourth or one-fifth the size of the main plant although if they have been exposed to the Sun despite the small size then I'll pull them out already because that means that I can leave them out in the elements you will know that they have been exposed to the Sun when you see that their leaves are compact when you see that the rosette is compact and the leaves are coloring up otherwise if they have been left without sun exposure then they'll just be really pale they'll be light green and that means that they won't be able to protect themselves from direct sun exposure so as with most of your succulents you have to acclimatize them slowly and that means gradually increasing the sun exposure that they get and just from all of the imbricatas at the back, I managed to fill up two boxes. And there's still the imbricatas in the front garden. I need a place to keep them. And as you can see, they are still quite etiolated. They haven't been getting enough sunlight, so I need a space that's not too bright. 
and I have a couple of options. The first option is right at the side of the house. There's a small strip here between our house and our neighbor. And the second option is the alcove. I can just plant them here for now, let them grow, and when they're large enough, that's when I can start moving them to more brightly lit areas. From the looks of things, once I finish harvesting from the front as well, we would need to use both areas. It's starting to get late, so I'm leaving them here under the alfresco. And as you can see, it's starting to look messy under here. I've harvested a lot already, and there's more to come. Despite the fact that it is summer down here in Australia, we've been having a string of cold days and nights during the past week. That maybe my imbricata are starting to think that it's autumn again. If you look closely, this one is coloring up. Actually, most of them are. This is the type of imbricata that goes more red. Because as you can see, this one has less chlorophyll compared to the others. I'm hoping to be able to propagate more of these. It's a good thing that we had those cold nights recently because this would help me identify which ones are the, the paler versions. There's another one over here. I think a few of them here are the pale versions. I intend to, I intend to make more of these ones and sell off most of the, the darker ones. Here's another view. This is one of the darker imbricatas. And over at this side, I planted uh, the lighter, the paler versions here. 
some of them have grown some pups so hopefully I would be able to harvest harvest them and plant them spread them around in this area I was hoping to be able to line both sides with the pale versions but at the time when I did this I only had a few of the pale ones or at least I only identified a few of them so once the pups here grow out I'd be able to move them and replace them in this spot on the left side and this giant ones can go I don't know maybe other sides other parts of the garden I'm not sure if you can see this but there's a ladybug crawling on my shoulder might not be obvious in my face but I'm a bit overjoyed because ladybugs naturally are natural predators of mealies so I'm hoping this one multiplies and I'm not really sure how it got into my garden well I hope there's going to be more of them go get them ladybug and yes I spent quite a lot of time the past two weeks just plucking out imbricata pups I did both the back and the front of our gardens and there's quite a few of them I don't know how it is wherever you are right now but down here in Melbourne the climate is ideal for echeverias like the imbricata and I would dare say most of the other succulents as well the main thing to consider is that we have a temperate climate which means that there's not much humidity during most of the year it can get quite humid here when it's winter and compared to the rest of the year the amount of rainfall during winter is a lot more compared to the other seasons I find it funny that compared to some of my more exotic echeverias I have a lot more imbricata casualties compared to those could be explained by the fact that I have a lot more imbricata than the others so but I think it boils down to sheer numbers because because of course if you just have a look around there's clearly a lot more imbricata compared to the rest but even so I find that I have to take some precautions just to keep them healthy and part of it is keeping check of their moisture because they seem to be prone to rot especially during the humid seasons so what I would do is just to be a step ahead and apply some fungicide well in advance all you have to do is to apply your fungicide of choice and maybe reapply it once every few every few months just follow the instructions on the label my weapon of choice is this fungus gun by Yates it is pretty cheap and it is a systemic pesticide there are more powerful solutions out there but this one is pretty accessible and since it is systemic you might have to make sure that you remove some of the flowers just to be sure that it doesn't affect the pollinators and no I was not paid by Yates to promote this so Yates if you're watching wink wink 